let me put yeah. something by these coaches, okay? okay. Because uh, I want them to answer it, and then uh, <clears throat> I'll tell them, I tell them uh, my my side of it. You know, when you watch television, and uh, <clears throat> the person goes down the line, and they hit the ball in the net. I don't care who it is. It could be Anatone. It could be uh, I don't care who it is. You know that that's a, they always say, oh yeah, you know. He goes over the higher part of the net. And, mm. uh, you know, that's why he hits it in the net. Now, if you really think about it, how stupid that is, uh, at least in my eyes, because the net is only six inches higher on the side, okay? Nobody, right. nobody hits the ball six inches above the net. Okay? They don't hit it six inches above the net. They hit it, they hit it two feet above the net. Some hit it three feet, four feet above the net, Right? So what is six inches going to do? It's going to do nothing. They're not, but what happens, i tell you what happens. With the grips that they have now, from the western to the more extreme western, the grip, when they go down the line, it flattens the ball out automatically. Don't ask me to explain it to you. When it flattens out the ball, you'll see when you teach your kids, when you have mm. them go down the line, the ball flattens out. They hit a better, a straighter ball. And mm. by, by going down the line, the ball becomes flatter and therefore stays down more. And that is why they hit it in the net. They don't hit it in the net because it's six inches higher. Because they don't hit the ball six inches above the net. You know what I'm saying? And I, I want yes. coaches well, to think about it and then go, Jesus, the guy is right, you know? Because my kid, when I have him hit cross court, they hit like, 30%, 40% top spin, when I tell him to go down the line, all of a sudden, it's not the same top spin. And it's, right. it's really Well, there's a book by Dr. Me, right? Brody from, um, who was Vic Braden's buddy, and uh, they did a thing on the physics of tennis. And actually hitting cross court is more dangerous for the net because the net is farther away. So because oh, the I net see. is further away, it's actually a bigger obstacle, or it pretty much equals out the difference in the height of the net. But your point about the ball flattening out does give me definitely something to think about. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wondering about that. I will definitely look at that. Uh, right. That's that's a pretty interesting observation. And then even with the top players, I mean, Nadal obviously started to flatten out his ball in order to become successful on hard courts. Um, because he used to just never get past the quarters of anything. Then he started to flatten out his ball a little bit more, and then right. and then he did much better. Um, so do you think it's generally true that even these heavy topspin players are flattening out the ball a bit more as they're stepping in on a ball, moving into the court? Well, it has not that much given to do whether they're stepping in the court or not stepping in the court. What they're doing is they're flattening out the ball, but they still have topspin on the ball. Like I said earlier, a pure flat ball doesn't really exist anymore. On the back end, it still exists, especially with girls. Girls can, for some reason, I don't know why, but they can flatten that sucker out and hit a flat ball. But they are all flattening it out. But like the guys, because they're stronger, they still can hit quite a bit of topspin, but the ball doesn't start floating up. The ball goes... Just so two, two and a half feet somewhere above the net that goes fast, and it looks to, to an amateur, it looks like a flat ball basically, but it's not a pure flat ball. It's a topspin ball. So that's right. why my theory has changed about hitting pure flat ball. You should hit a little bit of a topspin on it to control the ball. But right. like I said, not many forms are pure flat. Well, it's all relative because I remember uh, John Yandel did did a thing a while back, and he showed that Agassi and Sampras were on average hitting about um, seventeen, eighteen hundred RPMs on their on their ground strokes, whereas yeah. Sergi Bruguera was hitting thirty six hundred RPMs, and you know probably Nadal is higher than that on average, uh, but then. You know, Federer and Murray probably have lesser RPMs, and so then just 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 relative, less topspin looks more flat. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you want to do with this? Uh, 
this information you just gave me. What do you want me to do with it? You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't say, hey, I like Johnny Abdal. He's my buddy. But, uh, uh-huh. you know, for me, the thing when a kid hits the ball and say, hey, I see how many RPMs. I don't give a damn how many RPMs it goes. Just hit the ball when I think the ball should go and hit it hard. That's why right. I don't worry about RPMs. You know, the more reverse forehead you hit, yeah, the more spin you get. But, you know, the funny part is Nadal hits his back and flat as a doorman. You know, Nadal has no top to him in his backhand. He rips it flat, especially cross foot. I mean, but they don't talk about that. You know, they talk to him. The, 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 the people on TV are horrible, by the way, I think, you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, mm-hmm. Tennis Channel, Tennis Channel, Joe, as far as I'm concerned, is a joke. They always talk about the same thing. I mean, it, it's, it, it's boring. That, 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 that Tennis Channel is boring. They never talk about the reverse four, man. And it's like a no-no. The guy hits an unbelievable reverse four and passing shot, and they never talk about the stroke. They just talk about he made a great shot. There's no real information. And uh, I, I think the information that you get on TV is, is not very good information. I think they have to improve that, you know. And the RPMs, well, you know, you look, like I said, you look at Nadal's back and it's flat. And, but they never say, oh, look how flat he hits his back at. You know, they always talk about tops and tops. And so then, then the USGA got into this. He talks of Higueras, who is a Spanish guy. Oh, now we have to send our kids to, to Spain. Well, we have to practice and play. Let me tell you something, okay? The, the mm. theory that you have to become disciplined and they have to play on clay is, 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 is hard ones. You know, you discipline the kids. I don't care whether it's a horse shit. Court. I don't give a damn. You, you discipline the kid. A guy like Michael Chang grew up in Southern California. He grew up on the hard courts, but he had the discipline of a play court play, which means he had discipline. He had discipline. He won the friends. Uh, a guy like Boris Becker, who grew up in, on red clay, I saw him play when he was 15. I was there with Tracy, and he was a junior. He played, he got, he got beat by some Swedish kid that did nothing but top spin. And Becker lost. Decker won the won Wimbledon, I think, five times. He never won even an easy clay court tournament. He grew up on clay. It's the mentality. It's the mentality of the person. They either have the mentality of a clay court play. You have this guy Lopez. He grew up in Spain. <laughs> he is a, a lefty servant volleyer. He grew up in Spain. So why do you have to send kids to Spain to learn how to play tennis? It's such bullshit, I think, as far as I'm concerned. 